I think it's time for a tool video, but first. Up first, we got some trim clip pliers. These are made by Steck. They call them the Sure Grip trim clip pliers. Part number 21720, and they're made in China. Um, I believe that Steck um, came up with this design because they do have their patent number right there. Um, and it looks like there's some aftermarket copies out there. I could be wrong on that, but it looks like they came up with it. But um, I'm always trying to find any way to remove these style of clips. You got, you know, this type or these push pin ones. They can be kind of a bear to get out sometimes because they can be stuck in there um, pretty darn tight. And so when I was looking at this, I really liked that design. So let's actually get it out. There they are out of the packaging like that. Um, so they do kind of taper down right here, which I think can help um, get under these because sometimes uh, that's the hardest part is you got to pop these up just a little bit and then you can get under them and grab it. And I like these because they go all the way around. So you can get around the shaft of that clip right there and pop it out. This design or this style too. Just reach in there. And because it has this angle, you can kind of use it as a lever to help pop it up. Because um, that, that can be a big issue too, just trying to pull them straight up. Um, I Some of the other ones that I use a lot, I believe these are both from Lyle. But I use this style where you can, you know, get under the clip and then this little thing will move so you can kind of use it as a lever also. And that, that helps out. And then you have this style here for these where you can get in there and kind of pull them out. But even still, a lot of times when you use either one of these tools, these edges right here just kind of fold up. They fold up like that or snap, one side will snap off. So I'm hoping that by going all the way around that these will really be able to get in there and allow you to pull these out. At least in theory it should work well. I've, I've heard from others that use these and they, they seem to like them so that's why I went ahead and got them. Oh, and while I'm thinking of it, I was looking at the back of this. I have some work stands just like that that I'm using on the Accord project and I thought that that was pretty cool that they came out with these little um, rods or bars that just attach to the work stand and can hold the pieces out like that. Um, in particular, yeah, I was having a little bit of trouble, you know, putting the bumpers on there. I mean, you can put them on there. I definitely like being able to put the bumper on there like that. Or the fender, I would hang, I took the fenders off on the Accord project, and I hung them like that, but they have a tendency to want to kind of bang around down here, and this would have been nice to kind of hold it off, especially so you can paint or sand, kind of hold it still. So. That, that's a that's a neat idea. Maybe one of these days I'll pick them up. If you're interested, that looks like the part number right there, 35752. It's a little bonus tool that, well, I don't actually have in my hand, but bonus for you. All right, up next, we got the Mess Stopper, oil service plug. This is made by the Vibrant Yard Company, it looks like. Uh, it says Made in China right there. That's what they look like. You get them out. It's like they come in two different sizes. Well, in this bag, I believe they have other sizes also, but this is uh, medium and small. It looks like we get four medium and ten small. Uh, looks like this is the medium and that's the small. Pretty darn flexible, but you know, when you disconnect a, a line on a, on a vehicle especially, that's obviously what I'm getting them for, uh, it's nice you can insert that and, and plug it, hopefully. Um, with these couple sizes, you should probably be able to plug a, a lot of the lines you're going to come across on vehicles. Maybe the exception would be the you know inch and a half or inch and three quarter coolant um, lines. You might not be able to plug those with these. I'm sure you can't. But smaller coolant lines and other um, lines you could. But they look pretty neat. Um, what are they made out of? Uh, oil resistant N NBR rubber. Um, but they're pretty darn flexible. I suppose you could cut them if you needed to uh, make custom pieces. You could cut part of it off if you just needed to use this part all the time, or vice versa. I suppose if you just needed the smaller end, you could cut it off. Looks like they, they put the two holes right there where you could put needle nose pliers in there. I guess if you really had to kind of jam it in there, or to get it out, you could put it in there and squeeze to pull it out if it gets stuck in there. But I'm always on the lookout for things that'll stop drips, because usually when you're working on something and it's dripping, you're right underneath it. Um, I, they'll also keep contamination out of the lines that you disconnect too. So uh, hopefully I can feature that in a future uh, repair video. Let's see what um, what else we got. 
All right, up next from Klein Tools, we got a 10 inch alignment wrench, as they call it, made in USA, part number 3227. That's what it looks like right there. Well, let me get it out of the bag. All right, there she is out of the bag, nice and oily. Let me grab a rag here and kind of wipe it off a bit. So that's what it looks like. Stamped Made in USA right there. Perfect for aligning uh, suspension parts or anything like that where you need to, you know, line two pieces up. You can put that in there as long as you have enough room to get it in. Put it in there and align it. Um, years ago when I worked underground in a mine, we used to use spud wrenches just like this. Ours were longer. We probably used ones that were that long. And um, we use this and we use the old wrap wrench like this one from Rigid where it has this part right here. And between those two tools right there, I, we could pretty much take apart and put together a mine almost. Um, between this being able to align steel beams and things like that, um, and then using that, there's your, uh, there's your socket set right there. We didn't um, really bring sets of sockets and other tools down there. We used to make, uh, out of rubber hose, we used to just make holsters, put them on our safety belt, and that's how you uh, carried your tools around. Use two or three tools and that was it. This was a hammer, this was a wrench, this was also you could, you know, put it on pieces like that and use it as a handle. So you carry steel beams around, things like that. Um, pretty versatile tool when you start using it. Um, these are the same way. You could put it through and use these as a handle too to carry things. Or, you know, alignment pin like it's supposed to and obviously a wrench, but things like that. Definitely handy to have, especially when you've used them before. Um, but I definitely envision using this to help align um, suspension parts and things like that where other tools, other alignment bars that I have, maybe I can't get in there, but this one will, um, that's a decent size and it goes wide enough where I think it'll help align things. But anyway, that's this tool. Let's see what else we got. And up next from DeWalt, we got a seven inch medium angle grinder. Model DW840K, and I can see up here, right there, it says Made in China. It's upside down, so I won't try to show you. Looks like we get a free bag in here and five grinding wheels, so let's get it open. Before we get it open, let's see what it includes. We, of course, get the grinder, side handle, the six depressed uh, center wheels, guard, wrench, flanges, and a bag. And our specs down here listed uh, 13 amps. Our no load speed, 8,500 RPMs. Spindle thread, 5 eighths inch, 11. Spindle lock, yes, and the tool weight, 8.0 pounds. All right, looking at it out of the box, here's what we got. Got our nice little bag. It says DeWalt on it. Actually, that is, that is actually a pretty nice bag. I didn't even know it came with a bag, I think, when I bought it. Uh, we got some instructions, and we got time for that. We're going to handle the tool, and of course this is corded. I do have a Milwaukee 4 inch um, grinder, but it's battery operated of course. And you know, you're at the mercy of batteries. If you need to do a lot of grinding, um, which typically that's what happens when you're grinding, you're, a lot of times you're going to town for quite a while, well then you probably want something that's corded. Um, it looks like our grinding wheels are in there. I'm not going to put it together right now, but it's a tool from DeWalt. You know you're usually getting pretty good quality. DeWalt and Milwaukee make good stuff, so I don't think this will be any exception. So anyway, let's keep moving. Next, we've got some MIG welding pliers. These right here are welpers um, from Best Welds. What's the part number? YS50, made in Japan. Now these are the ones I specifically bought to go with my new welder. I did buy a new uh, Miller welder. And I wanted a good pair of those and so I bought this and I also bought some other supplies from the place that I bought my welder from and they inadvertently sent me this and when I told them about it they sent me this in place of something else I ordered when I told them about it they're like yeah just keep that we'll send you what you um, also ordered and, and so I got these for free so these are uh, also obviously MIG welding pliers from Irwin vice grip brand um, MG8 so they um, have eight functions. Uh, where are these made? I'm sure they're made, oh no, they're not made in China, they're made in India. I was gonna guess China, but it's actually India. 
And if we look at the Welper packaging, you can see, you know, just some of the ways you would use it. Spatter removal, hammering, tip removal and install, wire cutting, nozzle removal and install, things like that. Um, there's the two tools side by side. Of course, they are spring loaded, but they both feel like quality tools, but I definitely have to give the edge to the Made in Japan Welper here. That, that definitely feels like a quality professional tool right there. Compared to this, um, this feels like a good quality tool, but I definitely have to give the edge to that. And just for reference, there's my new Millermatic 211. Definitely plan to put that to good use. Alright, up next we got some sockets from Gear Wrench. I was working on uh, an old hot rod. Gave me an excuse to go out and buy some more SAE sockets. I did not have mid-length SAE sockets, and so that's what I got. Because obviously, working on an old hot rod, you need standard or SAE. This is going to be a quarter inch, and it's going to be 80305S. That's the model number. This is going to be uh, made in Taiwan. And these are 3 8 inch, and model 80555S. Also uh, made in Taiwan. Where is it? right there. Both are going to be SAE and they're go both going to be mid-length socket sets and they're both six points. All right, there they are out of the packaging. Take one of the sockets out and check it out. They look to be well made. Of course, you never know till you use them. Um, the sizes are stamped in. Uh, looks like on both sides, so that's good. It'd be hard to wear those off. You could eventually, but that's uh, that's going to stay a lot better than just uh, like laser etching can definitely wear off. Uh, let's see, gear wrenches surface drive supposed to eliminate um, rounding off of the fasteners where it's got these are rounded a little bit and then the corners right there are rounded out. Then that does work well. Uh, has this little entry angle to guide fasteners, and it says the serration depth is as deep as the fastener, so it goes all the way down down here. But I did notice. Uh, looking at this one right here and maybe this one right here, that one ends uh, about right there. And then this, the smallest one right here, ends about right there. Uh, what size is that? Quarter inch? So the quarter inch, yeah, that one only goes to right there. Now, some other gear wrench sockets I have that hasn't been an issue, so I don't think that it'll be an issue with this one, but just something to be aware of. Um, also, they come with this uh, nice rail, both of them, obviously. Um, I don't plan on using the rail. Um, I'm going to put them in my toolbox. But I pretty much use gear wrench sockets exclusively, and I really like them. So that's why I went ahead and completed my set with these. So I don't anticipate I'll have any issues with these because I have not had any issues with the rest of them. And there they are in the toolbox. I have Hanson three row trays, so they're made to hold uh, shallow, mid length, and deep. So I have quarter inch and three eighths inch. Um, that just gives you a little perspective on the difference between the shallow deep and then the mid length in between. So the mid length on the quarter inch, they don't look like they're quite halfway in between like shallow and deep. They're a little bit less than halfway as far as how deep they go. On the 3 8 inch, they're pretty much right in the middle between the shallow and the deep. Um, I should mention that on the quarter inch, they're only stamped in one place, so they're not stamped twice like on the 3 8 inch versions. And they don't appear to skip any sizes, at least any of the normal sizes. So we're, right here you can see we're 3 16 all the way up to 9 16 right there. And then quarter inch all the way to 7 8 And next, from Lang Tools, we got a wheel stud installer kit. This is going to be model 938 and appears to be made in USA. I didn't see anything that says otherwise, but I can clearly see Right there, stamped Made in USA right on it. So if we get them apart here, we've got four different size uh, wheel stud installers. Looks like this is M12 by 1.5. That's going to be the threads right there. Uh, M12 by 1.25. And I don't, I don't know if you can see where it clearly stamped Made in USA right there. And the sizes on these, half inch 20, and this is going to be 7 16 20. And we get a spacer, and it looks like our washer on there. 
Yeah, let me see if I can get these out. You know, we have it out of the packaging. You can clearly see our instructions right there. We put the stud through, and then we're going to take our spacer, put it over the stud. Then we're going to take our washer, put it like that. Then we're going to take our stud installer with the correct thread pitch, and we're going to thread it on. And then we're going to need something to tighten it up, because we're just going to tighten it and pull that stud through. And I think this design like that, you know, where these kind of move independent of each other, but they still kind of stay locked in place because of that. I think that really helps. And of course, you want to oil everything really good. But allowing these to move, I think, really helps with the friction and allows it to pull it through without binding up. Um, to do it, you're going to need um, one and an eighth. That's the size right there, inch and an eighth. That fits it perfect. You could always use, if you had metric only, a 29 millimeter will also fit. The 1 and 8 fits just a little bit snugger, but they would both work. I would have no problem using that. Um, a 28 millimeter will not fit, so you definitely would have to go with a 29, not exactly a common size either. But anyway, that's it for that. Let's see what else we got. And up next from Milwaukee, wouldn't be a big dog video if we didn't have some from Milwaukee, right? Uh, we got the quarter inch right angle die grinder. This is going to be model 2485-20. I believe that 20 means it's the tool only, so it does not have a battery or a charger. I did um, grab a battery also. This is the Red Lithium CP 2.0. So we'll use that in here. Uh, we're, I think in very small letters, it tells us down here that it is made in China. So, let's get it open. Alright, there's our tool right there. It definitely is, you know, a little more beefy, a little bigger than, uh, than the pneumatic one. And I don't envision that this is going to be as powerful as a pneumatic one or replace a pneumatic one. But I think it'll be nice. Um, to be able to just grab this and pop a battery in there not have to worry about any air hoses or anything else like that You got a small job or something especially if you have enough room to get it in um, Looks like it has four different speeds. So there's our rpms For each one 10 15 20 and then 24 5 Comes with a couple of wrenches And I just I happen to have another battery right here <laughs> Certainly quieter than a pneumatic one that's for sure and of course this is the M12 system so it takes the smaller 12 volt batteries yeah before we get to the next tool here's a comparison you know the battery operated one compared to some pneumatic ones now these are straight die grinders you can see the size of that this one is an old one I've had from Devilbus I had this many years this is a Onyx Astro or from Astro and then this one is a Chicago pneumatic. This is an angled die grinder and you can see the size difference So you can definitely get into tight areas with this on a vehicle compared to that um, Now don't confuse this with the uh, central pneumatic from Harbor Freight. Chicago pneumatic makes good tools um, But yeah, when you look at the size comparison now granted this is probably a little smaller more compact than some of the other models that you can buy but it's definitely nice to be able to get into tight areas. Now you still have to take into account you're going to have your uh, your air attachment right there. Now you can put right angles on there and help you, yourself out get into tighter angles. But um, for convenience, this is nice. For power and uh, more uh, compactness, you can't go wrong with air, that's for sure. Now from Lyle, we got a tap socket set. This is going to be model 70500 and made in USA. And if we read what the description says, ideal for use in areas where a T-handle won't fit, because that, that happens a lot on a vehicle. A uh, set of eight sockets, fit all number and fractional taps through half inch and one eighth inch uh, NPT taps, manufactured to MCTI standards. Also fits metric taps through 12 millimeter. Um, so kind of nice. Yeah, like I said, you get eight of them. So let's get them out of the packaging There it is out of the packaging comes with this little rubberized holder that keeps them in place looks like they really won't go anywhere um, I believe these take a Quarter inch ratchet. Yeah, it looks like it and then these are going to take a 3 8 inch ratchet. Yeah 
so we can take let's see we got M 10 by 1.25 pretty standard size and let's see right there that's the one that fits so we would just put it in like that grab our ratchet pop it on and just put it in there just make sure you go straight otherwise you're going to be in a world of hurt and probably my favorite tool of the day the work tunes by 3m so this is going to be hearing protection and headphones all wrapped into one that's kind of neat uh, let's see we got a 24 db noise rating reduction uh, where's the model model number 90543 and made in china and that's what they look like out of the box pretty minimal it does have these two wires coming out so you just got to be careful not to hook that on there but i don't think they'll be too obtrusive and these are compacted all the way so that gives a little room to be able to extend them uh, let's see it comes with some instructions and nobody got time for that and we get a usb cord uh, let's see what else we got of course they they connect bluetooth to whatever device you have like a phone ipod something like that integrated microphone so you could actually make and receive phone calls without having to uh to remove the hearing protection i don't know how you how that would work especially if you're in a really loud area they they may not be able to hear you but i don't know maybe it works well um and 40 millimeter high fidelity speakers so hopefully they sound good i can't wait to uh put these to use i hate having to uh you know put the hearing protection on then I can't hear my radio because I do like to play the radio as long as I'm not making a video I can play the radio as soon as I make a video I gotta turn the tunes off because then I get I might get hit with the copyright infringement and we don't want that but this will definitely be nice that way you can still enjoy your music and protect your hearing because obviously personal protective equipment like this PPE definitely important to have well, that's all the tools for this video, and as always, if the video helped you out and you liked it, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Thanks for watching.